Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to have a go at painting some dragonflies and I've been practicing this all morning and I've thrown away a lot of pieces of paper. Um, this one is in Facebook as today's challenge and I calmly said, oh, I'll do another one of those as a video tonight. Um, and then proceeded to have complete and utter painter's block, can't do a thing. So we'll see how it goes now. Um, I'm going on to a bigger piece of paper. This is a double spread in my Canson XL mixed media book, which is a 140 pound paper. And um, it's, it's nice paper, I quite like painting on this. This is a drawing actually of some swallows. That's just in a watercolor pencil. Um, and you know, this is where I do all my rubbish. So I thought, okay, I tell you what, since I'm blocked, I'll try and paint this on a bigger piece of paper. We all get blocked. We all suddenly start doing complete, um, what we consider to be failures. Other people might not consider them to be failures. I saw a painting on uh, YouTube today, uh, sorry, on Facebook today from a lady saying that she'd made a total mess, but she hoped that it was just about redeemable and everyone was saying it's not a mess it's not a mess but you know we see it differently other people see our work completely differently from the way we see it and we just need to try and get over that um but I really do think that mine were awful this morning <laughs> um regardless of whatever everyone else might think I think it's because sometimes I haven't had proper breakfast I think I said this the other day I had the wrong breakfast this morning I had strawberries for breakfast it obviously doesn't agree with me so let's uh, get started, as all the best watercolorists say. Now, I can do this straight onto the paper on a good day without any concerns about the outcome. On a bad day, sometimes I think it's better to actually draw something. So I think I'm going to draw something um, and just kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> give myself a break. Um, the harder you try to get something the right shape, the less likely it is to work. That's my rule of thumb. <laughs> and so I'm just going to paint four sausages and call that dragonfly. And the body and the head and the tail are going to be like that. So that's my um, uh, start starting point. And I can turn the paper around a little bit so that I can do another one here. And I have thought about, I know that you probably can't see this, but I'll do a sketch so that you can have a look at what I did um, by going to the website dianeanton.com and going to the page where it says sketches and you can look there. And even if you don't use the sketch, if you want to know exactly uh, how I drew it, should you be so inclined. Um, no, don't do it there. Don't do it there. Why not? Why not do it there? Because I'm echoing the same angle and that doesn't look right. So I need my eraser. Uh, so you have to think, okay, that one's going like that. That one's going like that. How's this one going to go if I'm going to do three? It's got to go straight more or less or, uh, yeah, well, it has pretty much got to go straight because that's the only option left. Got one going to the left, one going to the right. So it can't go exactly the same angle as that one. So we put we put with what will we do? We do that. That needs to be there, and that there. There are definitely days, you know. Obviously, the moon is in the wrong phase, and uh, my husband is in a strange mood. He's trying to put in a new pipeline so that we can water the vegetables out the front of the house and we've already had an argument about it you know how it is um it doesn't help I say I've got to do a painting this morning dear I can't afford to have an argument with you today it doesn't get me off on the right foot 
And he's like, yes, but I only want two or three minutes of your time to have an argument in. Just give me a, a couple of minutes and I'll, I'll get it out of my system and then you can go and do whatever you have to do. And I'm like, this is not going to help me do a painting. I don't think he understands. He thinks it's like tennis, you know, get wound up before the match and then you'll win. Not that he can play tennis anymore. You've got a choice here. Um, I did say what this paper was, didn't I? It's the Canson XL. It's the larger sketchbook. I don't know why they call it a sketchbook, because to my mind, sketch paper is thin. This is £140. That's not thin. I'm not going to pre-wet it. You could wet the wings and then drop the paint in and let it run. But wetting wet doesn't seem to be working for me today. So what I'm going to do is the opposite. I'm going to do wet on dry and I'm just going to pray. Just a very small amount of paint. And doing a kind of dry brush effort across the paper like that. Is it done? And um, to go with the green, let's have a little bit of a yellowish tinge. So I'm using um, what what uh, Paul Rubens calls, um, what does it call it? Transparent yellow. So we'll drop a little bit of that in. Very good color, transparent yellow. Nice clean yellow. Um, you know, you could paint dragonflies with just remnants of paint that's left on your palette from the previous thing that you did. Couldn't you? Maybe a tiny smidgen of blue on, on this wing, perhaps. The, um, I think the thing is with dragonflies, they are more, um, what's the word, transparent than anything else. So they tend to, when they have color, they're, they're sort of reflecting and refracting what's going on around them, aren't they? So we can do these really light, I think, and uh, difficult to know what to do for the centers, isn't it? Because what I've always done in the past is to use a neutral, fairly neutral color. And again, I don't even know if that's right. I don't, I don't see that many of these things, you know. But I'm, I'm going to use a sort of grayish blue for the center of this and hope and pray that this works. And then I'm going to go bop, 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 for the body. Just keep that nice and loose. And then maybe we'll drop in a few touches of something darker. And then it's probably best to soften that, just adding a bit more water. And I'm not completely um, sure how much dieback there's going to be with the colour on these paints. When I say dieback, I mean fading when it's dry, because I haven't used them very much yet. So I don't quite know, and I, but I might um, put a couple of spatters in there. And I think probably, I'm not sure whether I'm going to use a fine liner. That's too fat, that's 0.5, we want 0.1. I think I'll use the fine liner to um, put in these things here. They do have another, it's legs I think they are, and eyes. I'm gonna to want to put those in, in in black here. Um, they have two more and two more, but they, they tend to look a little bit ugly, I think. And we could, we could put, um, 
Ah, oh, veins in the wings, but I don't think I'm going to do that at the moment. If I do that, I'd wait until it's completely dry. Oh, yes, and also to um, emphasize some of the segments as well, but I'll wait until that's dry for that. But we might, while it's still wet, we could put in a few more dibs and dabs of color in different places. It doesn't really matter what you do. You could have a little bit of orange, perhaps. Let's warm it up a little bit, maybe. Maybe not so much. Maybe some darker, where did I, what did I do with that green? There it is. That's um, what they call brown umber mixed with transparent turquoise. And that's giving us quite a nice dark green. I'm going to remember that brown umber, which I, th that's what they call it. I suppose that's burnt umber in the traditional palette. So you, we need, once it's dried a little bit, we need just a few sh uh, sharp darks. Not too much. Maybe something down this end and perhaps up here. The odd one will probably run. But that's okay. I quite like this dark green. Burnt umber or brown umber and transparent turquoise. Hmm. You hear the sheep bleating in the background. They, they think it's time to be let down into the back garden so they can cut the grass for us. We're never going to get this done if you don't let us out. Okay, I think I'm going to... call that one done. And we'll go on to the next one, which um, let's do this next one in... Uh, Maybe we'll do this next one in, in, in turquoise. So we just dab on a little bit of paint and say a quick prayer and just spread it out. Flicking it a bit. The paper um, is fairly important when you're doing when you're doing um, this kind of painting. It doesn't work if you don't have the right kind of paper, which I found out this morning as well. So I'm going to put some pinkish brown. I think that one is Indian red. I put for the second wing. And then we link the two together, I think, by taking a little bit more of the turquoise and dropping that in. I think it's really important not to be too hard on yourself when, when you come to paint. Because it's, there, you know, people say, oh, it's very relaxing. Well, it isn't. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes you get really upset. Uh, or your blood pressure goes up. Sometimes. Especially if you're not feeling your best. Or So, 
I can see I can see now why people do things like um, uh, coloring in, you know, doing coloring in books because they are much less demanding. The older I get, the harder it gets, it has to be said. Okay, so again, um, a couple of uh, dark low lights. Put a spot on the end of his wing if you wanted to, I suppose. It's just, it's fun to sort of um, watch what happens when you put paint on and then you make it run and try to be patient and not jump to conclusions. Let's put the front legs in. And the eyes could probably do those with a pen, with a brush. Where did my lexicon go today? You can lift some of the color out if you feel it's gone a bit boringly uniform just by taking a clean brush and brushing into the color a little bit so you can make it lighter on one side than it is on the other, which can be a good thing to do. Top of the head, for example, you can lighten that a bit. And we could put a few spatters in there too, like that, couldn't we? And number three, I think obviously we need to go for cobalt blue because cobalt blue is everyone's friend. Just turn that around a little bit. I hope I turned the camera on. It would be quite irritating if I hadn't, uh, but I have, I think. So I had a, a quick message today from someone who I've known for about the last five or seven years here, who I suppose she was a friend, although recently she changed her allegiance and decided that somebody else was going to be her best friend. So I haven't seen much of her since these other people came onto the scene. They live a bit closer to her, so it's more convenient. And I don't have any problems with that. I mean, she's not well, the poor woman, so she can't be blamed. Anyway, she's going back to England and to spend her last few years with her sister because she has lung cancer. Well, it, it's the girl, the woman who's here who has lung cancer. Um, and she's going back to be with her sister for the last period of time in her life, which is really very sad. I'm sorry to know she's going, but she's going. So that's almost the last person I know here in France, I think. That's certainly the last person uh, I had any thing that you might call a friendship with. Everybody's gone. And almost all of our neighbours have died. It's like apocalypse now, in slow motion. Okay, there's the body of that one. And um, let me put his oh, 
Come on. Come on, Windsor and Newton. Don't let me down. Seriously. Should use a pencil. I'm going off these fine liners. They do that only too often. And uh, after a while, you start to get a little bit irritated by that. Okay, so emphasizing again the shape with a little bit of dark. Shall we have some a little bit more brown, brownish, brownish gray. This is Indian red with a touch of um, cobalt blue. I know I've gone quiet. I was thinking about colour schemes. And, and so on. Um, and pens that don't work. Okay, well, I think I've probably bored you long enough. I'm going to use a pencil if I can find it, there it is. This is a um, watercolor pencil, a black one, Karat Aquarelle. It can be relied on to be dark and to give you nice dark lines. It will work where a fine liner doesn't. It's a little bit more organic. So you can get these nice darks with this pencil. I'll put the link in the description below. Yes, a little bit more organic and you can use it to put darks in, which are quite nice like that. You see, so then do it on one, you have to do it on the others as well. Just a little bit though. Okay, now you could come in and do more vein work and all that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not vain. No, sorry, bad joke. I'm going to put in some blue dots around here as well. And I'm gonna call that done. Phew! Finished. Can I go and lie down in a darkened room now, please? Um, if you watch this video today, please come along on Sunday to watch the live premiere that we're going to do, which is all about creating backgrounds as um, backgrounds for painting other things on using a jelly plate, which uh, I have only just recently discovered and uh, I'm going to explore it along with you and I hope you'll find it interesting. I find it fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So here we are, Paul Rubens, three uh, uh, dragonflies for your delectation. I'll let you go and I'll see you on Sunday at, um, let me see, 11 o'clock in California. So you can do the math, 11 o'clock in California, eight o'clock here. So bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> I'll let you go now. Bye.